This is uh, Shekhar here. I'm so grateful to the IRF that we get this opportunity to ask you some questions. And for the first time, I've uh, seen you, and I'm glad that I can ask you a simple question. I am a businessman, and one of my, or rather my only hobby, is uh, studying religions. So one of them, obviously, being the Quran. So m my question is fairly simple. Like, um, I really liked what you spoke about Aisha. That was a very uh, wonderful thing that you said. So m um, my question is fairly simple. I'll make it very small. But I really hope that I have the opportunity to cross-question you after you answer me on your answer. Thank you. So uh, we see in Muslim, uh, book number four, number 217, wherein it says, a part of it that is, uh, he stuck me, Aisha, on the chest, which caused me pain. Uh, further down, if you look at uh, Miskat al-Masabi, uh, volume two, page number 690, repeated again in Muslim, book number nine, number 3506, a part of it, I'll just get to the point, wherein Umar is trying to say to the prophet, or trying to, rather trying to make him laugh, he says, Messenger of God, I wish you had seen the daughter of Kharija, where she asked me for extra money, and I got up and slapped her on the neck. God's messenger laughed and said, they are around me, as you see, asking for extra money. Abu Bakr then got up, went to Aisha, and slapped her on the neck, and Umar did the same to Hafsa. Now we see something of a pattern coming in. Then uh, if we just jump to Quran chapter 4, verse 34, and those wives you fear may be rebellious, admonish, banish them to their couches and beat them. Now, as I understand from your talk, and that there is equal punishment for both man and woman, I'm not contending whether they should be beaten or not. My point is, uh, what is the right of the woman if the man is wrong? Because he gets to beat her up. Well, that's a very good question, and I give you the right to cross-question me after the answer. It is granted. The brother quoted Hadith of Sahih Muslim and Mishkat al-Masabi. Do you know the relationship between Hafsa and Hazrat Umar? Well, I've not really got to the point that much. I'm st still studying. Do you know the relationship of Aisha and Abu Bakr? May Allah be with them both. Her father, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. I'm asking you a question. Are you married? Yes. Yes. Do you have a daughter? Two of them. Two of them, fine. I get if, to go to heaven. Sorry? I get to go to heaven. No. <laughs> if you bring them up correctly, I, I remember with that. love I remember and that. compassion, then you'll go to heaven, otherwise not. <laughs> but, just kidding, just kidding. But that is only righteous deed. Without demand, you can't enter Jannah. So for you to go to heaven, besides upbringing your two daughters correctly, you have to follow the laws of the Quran and the Sahih Hadith and be a believer. I understand. That we'll discuss after answer to you. I understand. After answer, inshallah. I'm asking a simple question. Suppose your daughter, if she wants to jump from a 10-story building, what will you do? I'll stop her. If she's adamant, what will you do? Point, yeah. You get the point, very good. If so, she wants to jump, no, I want to go. I want to fly like Superman. Dad, you are preventing me from being a superman. What will you do? Well, I'll, uh, I'll stop her, obviously. Will you slap her or not? If, if, if required. She says, no, I want to jump. What will you do? Well, I, I can ask the other way around. What I'm asking, my wife brother. Sees? I'm asking. If she wants to jump from the 10-story. I will hit her. If required. Not normally. You'll say, Are beti, jando na, superman mat bono. Nahi, bandhi ke abba. Jump maanne ke. Ab dekho kaisa uđti hume. I want to fly. One flap. A father is cruel to be kind. Yes. Now, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, anyone who does not love Allah and his messenger more than his own life, he is not a Muslim. Anyone who does not love Allah and his messenger more than his own life, he is not a Muslim. So there are many occasions what happened that sometimes they were disrespectful to the husband. Not a normal husband, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were many occasions, not one occasion. There are many occasions, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, and Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. When they came to know that one of the wives has caused pain to the Prophet, they were the father-in-law of the Prophet. But they loved the Prophet not only more than their daughter, they loved the Prophet more than their own life. 
there are many occasions. Which occasion you are referring to, I don't know. There were occasions when they came to know that my daughter has caused pain to the Prophet of Allah. How dare she does it? They being father, they have the right to slap. Not you and me. For us, they are the Ummuhat al Mu'mineen. They are the mothers of the believers. But yet, they were human beings. Even the wives of the Prophet. Though they were wives of the Prophet, they are the best examples, yet they were human beings and they did make mistakes. Like the ayah recited by the Qari, Surah Nisa chapter 4, 32. They want equal rights. There was in Surah Azab chapter 33, where the wives of the Prophet tell the Prophet, why don't you give us the luxury of this world? They objected. Why are we undergoing such a life of poverty? So Allah sends a revelation. If you want this world, I will grant it to you, but you will not get Jannah. The verse of the Quran says, I will free you. That means, if you want, I will let you go free. Divorce. Not that he divorced. And you can get the luxury of this world, but you won't get heaven in the hereafter. And the wives of the Prophet, they repented, and they asked for forgiveness, and Allah forgave them. So here also, it's in context. And going against the Prophet is more bad than jumping from top. Jumping from top, your daughter will kill herself. That's it. Correct? But going again, the Prophet is more bad. Did you get the answer? Uh, sir, but my question still stands. I understood your point. I haven't completed my answer. Okay, you asked the question. No problem. My, my question is uh, pretty simple. I haven't completed my answer yet, brother. All right. Because I know your question was in two parts. Then you quoted the verse of the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 34. Yeah. And said about wife beating. I want to complete that before you answer. Otherwise, you said, I can answer half. I only answered one part of your question regarding hadith. The second part is of Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 34, exactly after the verse that was recited by the Qari. After verse which says, that the men are the protectors of the women, the verse says that if they're disobedient, if they're disobedient, then don't talk to her. After that, don't share the bed. Then the Arabic word is daraba, means beat her lightly. The Arabic word is, beat her lightly, daraba. Abbas, may Allah be peace with him, said, when you beat your wife, you should not beat on the face. Point number one. Point number two, when you beat your wife, there should be no mark left on her body. And he gave an example, beating with a miswak. Miswak is toothbrush. In modern way, I will say beating with a handkerchief. Handkerchief. Now, if you beat your wife with a handkerchief, it is symbolic. It is not wife bashing. Wife bashing is not allowed in Islam. Wife bashing means one shot on the face. Hit so hard so that the mark remains. She'll remember you for the next one week or two weeks. In Islam, wife bashing is prohibited. It is daraba means beat her lightly. That means first you tell her she's wrong. You admonish her. Don't share the bed with her. Ultimatum. Last warning. Beat her lightly. Now, what I said, for any crime committed, the punishment is same. Punishment is same. Beating lightly is not a punishment, it's a warning. Can you do the opposite? Can the daughter hit the father? What if your daughter slaps you? Will you like it? No. Why? Equality. Let me come to my answer. You talk about equality, if your daughter slaps you, will you like it? No. No. There may be occasion when you get lunatic, when you become very old, and if you want to jump and then she slaps you, I will agree with her, correct? Though you said, no, I'm agreeing you. I understand. I'm helping you. You understand, but you don't understand me. Uh, no, I do, I'm helping you. Okay. If you grow up and you become a lunatic, you become senile, you want to jump from the 10-story, your daughter says, Abba, mat karo, don't do father. She may have to slap you. She's doing in good faith. Accept it. Right? Now here, where a husband is giving a warning to the wife, if the wife does the same, what will the retaliation be? Imagine, suppose a big, there's a massive person, bodybuilder comes and acts macho with you. If a small man comes, maybe you'll hit him. A macho person, Anil Swashnikar, comes and tells you something. Will you hit him? Will you hit him? No. <laughs> ah, though you may have a lot of guts, but Anil Swashnikar, no. Why? Similarly, since Allah says in the previous verse, man has been given more strength than the woman. So a physical warning, a symbolic warning, a man can give to a woman, a woman can't give to a man. A woman can't. There are other things. There are other things you can do. Such as? Such as, for example, if she has to cook food in the house, 
It's the duty of the husband to get market. She can refuse to cook. If you don't get market, I will not cook. She can object. Very well. She can object saying, I will not cook. It's an objection on her part. If, for example, he's not offering salah, offering salah is important, she can object nicely with love and affection. My dear husband, please offer salah. Then she may get a little bit angry also, no problem. Getting angry with husband is not allowed, unless it's for the sake of Allah and his Rasul. But not physical. She can't get physical. If she gets physical, there will be retaliation. It will never work. Imagine your wife slapping you. Will you leave her? Fine, you may say, Jando. So, what do you realize? This is a symbolic beating. What the Western media has done, they portray as though it is wife bashing. Where is wife bashing? You know the hadith also. So, because of that, Islam is the best way of life. It shows you how to lead life with your wives also. Hope that answers the question. If you have any counter question, you're most welcome, brother. Yes, actually, two points on that. Primarily, the first thing that you said is a daraba, uh, which means basically tapping. And as I understand from the Hans Word Dictionary, um, the, it comes from the word idrib. And now, if you look at it, the Arabic word is used in two ways. One, to strike up a poem, the word idrib, which, from which the word darwa is uh, taken out. Uh, the first is to strike up a poem, and the second, which is used 12 times in the Quran, Strike off, what is it? Strike off? Physical action of striking. Strike off? Strike up a poem. Or second. Strike up a poem. Strike up a poem, the, metaphorically. Second part is the physical action of striking. It's used again in uh, Surah 812, wherein it um, about an angel strike off their heads, strike off the very tips of their fingers. The same word is used. So how can the same word be interpreted there as lightly, but here as very good off question. the second part? Very good question. Very good question. The second part is that if we come back to uh, Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, number 715, again, uh, the respectable, I truly mean that, uh, respectable woman Aisha, a great scholar, I read about her, uh, narrated Aisha said that a lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her, that is Aisha, and showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. It was the habit at that time for women to support each other, means when they get beaten up, so you support each other. So when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as a believing woman. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. That was my second part. As for second part, I answer first, and first part, I answer second. No problem. She's complaining to the Prophet that somebody has done injustice to her. It doesn't end saying the Prophet agreed with it. If someone has done injustice, if you read ahead in some other hadith, the Prophet may have done justice to her. It doesn't say that someone beat her and the Prophet agreed with it. Correct? She's just reporting that maybe there is injustice done to a woman. That's it. The moment she's complaining means she's disagreeing with it. She didn't say, Prophet, I heard a very good thing I saw that the woman was beaten up. The moment she's complaining means the wife, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be peace with her, disapproved of it. So the lesson we get from this is no one should beat the woman such a way that she becomes green. But sir, uh, see, the exact statement she makes is that I have not seen any woman, that's Aisha herself, it's not my interpretation, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing woman. So we see at the time of Muhammad uh, that women were really uh, in very, very bad shape, even though... You know, you know, the say, hadith is saying, I have not seen a person, a believing person like Hazrat Bilal suffering. What was he suffering from? His master tortured him and said, don't say there's one God. And I will leave you, Hazrat Bilal, may Allah be peace with him, on that death stone, he's agreed to die, he will say, I will not denounce Allah. I will keep on saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. He's taking the pain. That means if I say Hazrat Bilal is a believer who is being tortured, that does not mean that what act that being done on Hazrat Bilal, may Allah be peace with him, is right. It is wrong. 
but he's a believer who's taking the pain. In this context, we have to see the context and go to the Shara. We have to see Fatih Bari and what was the woman? Was she? What was she? Who tortured her? Was it the master? Was she a slave woman? You have to go to the Shara. I am not a muhaddis. I'm telling you what the answer can be. You have to go to the Shara and find out. Why was she? Who hit her? Who beat her? Did the husband do? Was the husband a believer? There are 10,000 reasons. But Just sir, because... Uh, excuse me. In Mishka Tal Masa Masati, Brother, Brother volume, Shekhar, volume 2... Brother Shekhar, yes. what I would like you to do, there are so many people waiting at all the mics. Precisely, concisely, I would like you to put your question in a few words and then close. Because you've got such a big sheaf of papers, there are many people I see waiting with small it's slips or something. Question. So we cannot allow this whole thing to go on. This is not a debate session. It's a question Brother. and answer session. I want you to put your question in the next four sentences. Let Dr. Zakir answer so that all the many ladies standing there here also get a chance. We have exactly one hour, 12 minutes left. We I'm have occupied 20 that. minutes already. Brother, initially you asked two questions and answered. You said, I want a counter. What counter you gave? In the counter, you're asking one more question. I don't mind answering your 100 questions, but in this rule, one question at a time, go behind the queue, no problem. You ask two questions, give the answer. You say, I want a counter question. With the counter question, you're asking one more question. So, you know, I'm very kind, I don't mind. I would love. After finishing, you can come in the cabin. And inshallah, I will answer all your questions. I want to ask you, after I answer your question, what will you do? Will you believe in the religion Hazrat Aisha believed? Yes or no? I yet have to answer your counter question. Well, it's not just this one point. There are many, many more. I'll answer inshallah all. How many are there? 10, 20, 50, 100. How many? Well, we can sit on that. How many approximately? Well, there are many more. I have not How many? 10, 20, 100, 1,000, 10,000. How many do you have now in your mind? Well, I do have. How many? 10, 20, 30. How many? There are probably quite a few. Maybe. Quite a few is how much? 5 or 10? Approximately. I don't know. Maybe 100 questions. 100 questions you have? Brother, after this session is over, we sit together. Okay? Write down all the 100 questions. Inshallah. Inshallah. I will try and answer everyone. Okay? I request you. We'll spend the full night together. I don't mind. Because you are a seeker of truth. And I'm also a seeker of truth. And my job is to try and clarify the truth. Not that I'm a scholar. I will try and answer all your 100 questions. But I doubt whether you will be able to write 100 questions. I doubt. Coming to your main counter question, brother. That will be basic counter question. Counter question of yours is that Daraba has got two meanings. One is take off the head. You ask me then, how do you come to know which is correct? Correct? Exactly. In the counter question, don't ask one more question. That means you're breaking the rule. Sir, I'm just refuting what you said. No refuting. See, you asked the counter question. Counter question was of Daraba has got meaning of striking. That is the counter question. In that counter question, you ask one more question. You can't ask one more question in a counter question. You can ask one counter question, but that was a fresh question that you asked. Now coming to your question of Daraba. You said striking, I agree with you. How do you come to know one time it is lightly beating, one time it is striking of the head? You know the verse in the Quran is there. In sorry, Maryam. Chapter 19, verse number 47. Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, she says, when Archangel Gabriel says that you shall have a son. So she says, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? How shall I have a son when no man has touched me? Now if you go to the Luga, your hands wear dictionary. All lanes, I believe you read my dictionaries. All this thing on the internet. It's not difficult. You go on the internet and type, you'll get 100 questions against Islam. And 100, you'll get 1,000. Very easy. Not that a person has done research. If you had done research, you'd have come to know who was whose father and who was whose husband and mother, everything. But you go on the internet, you get this very easy. Now, the Arabic word, masa, has got two meanings. Physical touch, it means sexual touch. So when Mary Mella be pleased with her, she says, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? It is understood. It is not physical touch. It is sexual touch. Correct? Yes. Similarly, there are several verses in the Quran. Now, when there are two, three meanings, even both can be correct or one can be correct. To have more details, you go to the Hadith. Hadith is the commentary of the verse of the Quran. Correct? Maybe the same word has got two meanings. In that verse, it means meaning number one. 
in the second verse in meaning number two. Hadith is the commentary. So when we go to the Hadith of this Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 34, talking about Daraba, there the Prophet said, do not beat on the face. Do not leave a mark. Beat like a toothbrush. I gave the answer, but you were so much concentrating on the notes you have that you forgot my answer. If you have heard my answer, that if there are two, three meanings, all meanings cannot be right. Maybe one is right, maybe two are right, maybe all three are right. Therefore, you have to go back to the Prophet. The Quran says, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So when there are two, three meanings, you have to go to the Hadith and find out what did the Prophet mean by that word. So there when it says strikes off there, it means strikes off. Here it means strike lightly. So therefore, if you know the supplement is the commentary of the Quran, it's the Hadith. Without the authentic Hadith, you cannot understand Islam. So a prophet said, it means beat lightly, like beating with a toothbrush, don't beat on the face, don't leave a mark on the body. So these are the guidance given by Rasul. Therefore, it is obligatory that besides the Quran, you have to follow the authentic Hadith. Hope that answers the question, and inshallah, I'll wait for you after 10 o'clock in the speaker's lounge, inshallah. Thank yes, Brother Shekhar? Thank you. And, and since you have two daughters, you said you have two daughters and you want, sorry? And one son. The son, there's no Hadith saying the son will take you to Jannah here. Yeah. <laughs> if he becomes the pious son, and if he prays for you, inshallah, he will be a path to Jannah. What I want, I want to see to it that besides good deeds, you even have faith. Faith is one of the important criteria to go to Jannah. And since you have an urge to go to Jannah, to paradise, inshallah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he make me the zariah, the pathway to take you to Jannah, inshallah.